Hello, welcome to Learn and Flutter. And today we're going to look at navigation with name routing. Please help me out by doing your part, by hitting that like button. I'm going to keep doing my part by trying to make videos that you like and enjoy. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed and certainly hit the notification bell so you can be notified as soon as I post videos. And of course, if you can spread the word, I really appreciate it. But the first thing you can do right now is to hit that like button. All right, let's jump into the material. Now, in our previous video, we said that let's say you had an application with three screens. You had a home screen and maybe another screen like page one and page two. And we showed it how you can navigate between them. And essentially what happens when you navigate in Flutter is that the current screen is visible, which in this case is screen page two, but there's a stack that's being managed at a, to the behind the scenes by the navigator widget. And that widget implements essentially a stack that keeps the screen in the order in which they were displayed. And so the current screen is always on top of the stack the previous screen is going to be below that and so on and so on. And in order to um, show a screen, what we did the last time we use push to push a screen widget onto the stack. And then we use pop to remove it. And you can imagine in this example, if I pop off page two, the widget below it, which is that green widget, is going to become the new um, widget that I'm going to see on the screen. And well, it was created before, but you know, and so that would be my own page again. Now, for name navigation, what we're going to do is not use push, but rather we're going to use name. And this is going to come in handy when you have very complex navigation. It's going to be a little bit hard to keep track of, you know, I push this widget, I push that widget, I push that widget, the other widget. It might be just easier for you to be able to think in terms of which widget you want to be displayed and give it a name and then just say push that um, the named widget. And of course, since it's still a stack, the, the, the same thing apply where you can just pop it off. Because of course, if you want to go backwards and you want to go to this previous screen, just pop off the current screen. So you can imagine that we're going to have a table. You, you don't have to worry about it, but it's just this mapping between a string that we're going to use to navigate to the screen, right? You have slash meaning like your own page, for example, and then you can give any string that you want to map to the other widgets. And we're going to see exactly how to do that. So let's jump into the code. So here I am at my command line. Let me zoom in a little bit more. Maybe that's too small. And so if we look at our previous examples, and we're of course going to copy example six and call it part seven and navigation. And we're going to do named routing. And so I'll enter there and then I'll change into that directory and start off my Visual Studio Code editor. And notice I have my simulator already running. But here is our code from before. And so we're going to go to lib and here is our application. Now, if you remember what we did before, like I said, is that we use um, the navigator that push and then give a context and then we say, material route and we use the material route widget in order to create the page that we want to be displayed. We're not going to be using that. And the way you do that is if you look at our material app here, we have defined with the own pages, but instead of saying with the own pages, what we'll do, we'll get rid of the own page because we're using name routing now. And we're going to say initial route. And this is a string. Initial route is a string. So if you remember that table that I gave you, well, let's say our initial route, we want to be slash. And then we can do routes. And then if you notice, routes is a map of string to widgets. And so essentially, it's a function that takes a build context and return a widget. So what all we really need to do is to build up a map. So then we put in our route because that's the string, that's the first thing. And then we say, what does it map to? And so it's a function that takes a context and then returns a widget. In this case, our first widget is going to be our own page widget. And that's it. And so if we save this, that's our first 
entry into that map that I showed you as a table. So the next one we have is let's say call it page one and we're going to call this page one and here is page two. All right, so that's all there is to it. Once you use an initial route, do not use um, the home, you know, home property, right? Um, home property, if you use an initial route, because you were saying that my initial route is slash and my you define what your initial route is. So there's no need to use the home property. Okay, so now why we have this defined, in terms of, okay, you know what? Let's start our application in the meantime. So start the bug, let's build it and run it and minimize this. Now, in terms of navigating now, and this goes to the end here, right? And so if we say navigate that push named, and you can see context, and then the name of the route. And so we can say page one, for example. That's how we get to page one. And here, very same thing, push name, push name route context, and we wanna push page two. That's how easy it is. Um, in a way, a lot simpler than what we were doing before. And so this is on our home page, and this allows us to navigate to one of the two of those, to either one of those two pages. Once we're on page one and we want to go back to our own page, well, we just pop. So pop is the same thing because once we're on this page, we know that our page one is on top of that stack. So if we want to get to the previous page, we just pop it off, which happens, we know that in this case happened to be will be the home page. And similarly, we just pop it. So nothing new there, the only change was here. Now we navigate to that page. And so let's run it and see. So the result should be exactly the same, and it is. So here again is a very simple way of doing routing. Either one works. This one is more flexible when you start having a lot of pages and you have very complex navigation. So it's best to know both, all right? So, okay, before I end the video, let me show you the documentation. It's always good to know where to find the documentation. Again, go to Flutter, Dev, then Docs, and then you can click on User Interface here. And within User Interface, you have Navigation and Routing. The one we did today was navigation, um, Navigate with Name Routing. So, that's where you find the information and example also. Very similar to what I did. Read it, check it out. Take care. That's it. But on my way out, I'm going to ask again, please kick the like button. See you in the next video. Take care. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe. And in this time of COVID-19, hopefully you are able to practice some social distances. Um, this is not going to make any sense if somebody's watching it 10 years from now or 20 years from now, but maybe it wouldn't matter. But whatever you're doing, try and stay safe. Bye.